Hello and welcome to Digital Seniors uh, and our show is called Let's Get Digital. We're here on Arrow FM and we're here every month now, every third uh, Wednesday of the month. We do have a number that you can call if you have any issues and that number is 0800-373-646. Uh, it's 0800-373-646. And with me today, I have Sarah. Hello, everybody. I'm Sarah, and I want to talk to you a little bit about how you can access our free services. Um, if you're in Masterton, you can come along to the Masterton Library every Wednesday between 10 and 12 and drop in and get some free help with one of our volunteer coaches. If you're in Carterton, that's every Tuesday from 9.30 to 11.30 at Three Mile. Greytown is in the Greytown Library every Tuesday from 1.30 to 3.30. Featherston, we're in Union Church every Thursday from 1.30 to 3.30. And Maddenborough, we're at St Andrew's Church every Thursday morning from 9.30 to 11.30. Um, if you need to give us a call to find out more information, you can also book a spot at one of our hubs. Our number is 0800-373-646. Okay, and today I've got a little presentation. Now, those of you watching on Wirap TV can see this, but of course, if you're on the radio, you can't see this at all. But this is a little PowerPoint I put together, which is to describe the differences between Wi-Fi, Bluetooth, and mobile networks. A lot of people get these confused and they're not sure what it means if to be on Wi-Fi or not. So here we go. So the first image here, mobile networks connect you to the internet. Okay, so you can see I have a little um, Wi-Fi or sorry, I say mobile network tower and you can see it connects to your phone so you can use your phone as a phone or you can use it to do things like look up things on google or to watch cat videos or whatever it is you want to do so you can make phone calls send text messages but when they transmit the internet to your phone you have to pay for the data usage okay so that's really important to know because with the data usage some people are on a prepay plan and unfortunately sometimes you go over your limit and you have to top it up and so you're constantly topping it up with your credit card and saying okay i want to do this and i want to do that okay i got to top it up again so you have to be aware of that there are some plans you can get where you don't have to do the top up you just get a certain amount of data you can download every month but you have to pay for that Okay, and the more data you use, the more you pay, of course. Now, do you have any questions, Sarah, about what I've been talking about? Well, I must admit this happened to me a few weeks ago where I went over my data usage and I had an extra hundred dollars on my bill and it was a terrible surprise. Oh dear. So it's really worth keep keeping an eye on this and understanding um, how it works. Yeah. And sometimes they charge you extra for things like if you send a lot of photos in a text message, they'll charge you extra for that. I made the mistake of accidentally thinking I was on FaceTime with a friend in the States and it turns out I was making an international phone call. Oh, no. So you have to be really <laughs> careful about these things. So it was a $30 extra charge, but still that's, mm -hmm. that's a lot of money. Yeah. So this next image that I have up on the screen, for those of you who can see it, it just shows you a basic diagram. It looks very confusing, but it just shows that you have cell towers. This is why they're some kind, sometimes called cell phones, because they operate and they broadcast to an area, a radius, and that radius has been applied to, or it, it looks similar to a cell, like in the human body. So that's why they're called cell towers. And so if you are standing amongst a whole bunch of them, you get a really strong signal. And if you're talking to someone else who's in another cell tower area, they get a strong signal, you can talk to them. But sometimes you might be on the very edge. If you go out into the countryside, you might find that all of a sudden you get no service. And that's for a reason. There's no cell tower out there providing you with that service. It's not just magic. You have to have a cell tower somewhere. And when I was living in Colorado many years ago, um, they actually disguised a lot of the cell towers like trees. 
but they were obvious looking trees. They, they, they weren't natural looking, but they were trying to cover them up somehow. And that's the problem. The more you want to have these services, the more you're going to have these towers everywhere. If you're in the city, it's not quite as bad an eyesore, but when you're out in the countryside, it can be. And so there are some places where there's no cell coverage and you got no signal. And there's some, like, there's one particular cafe I know of where when I go to it, I get very poor service. And that's because it's so close to the hills and the towers are up on the hills. And so the signal is a straight line signal. It doesn't go around corners. And so obviously the signal is not strong enough to get into that cafe. So that's why sometimes you can go places and you go, it looks like I have a signal, but you can see the little bars on your cell phone that show how strong your signal is. And if it's a one bar, you may not even be able to make a phone call. So you have to be careful about that. That can be critical, unfortunately, if you're driving across the country and you may have a problem in trying to get a hold of somebody, you know, a breakdown, a flat tire or something, it can be an issue. So anyway, just to point out that when you make these calls, it isn't all through the air. You might make a call through the air to a cell tower and that goes to a cable. And let's say you're calling from here in the Y Rap and you're calling someone, let's say down in Christchurch. Well, they have to do it through a cable to another cell tower in Christchurch so that then they will pick up the signal over the air. So that's the way it works. It's not all in the air. It actually does use a lot of cables throughout the country. And if you're calling overseas, quite often you're doing it via satellite as well. So it gets quite complex. But the most important thing, thing to think of or to remember is that this network is in kilometers. It just stretches wide out there. Whereas the next network we're going to talk about is actually much smaller, and that's your Wi-Fi. Now, the Wi-Fi connects you to the internet, and quite often, this can be at your home. It connects to your phone, tablet, or computer without wires. That's really handy. You can have Wi-Fi installed at home only if you already have an internet connection at your home. So it might be a cable coming into your house. Uh, it might be uh, another system, but usually it's a cable. Um, I, for example, recently had fiber optics installed in my little place in Featherston, and it's great. And you know what? Have you seen, uh, Sarah, what a fiber optic cable looks like? I've got no idea. What does it look like? I mean, I thought it was like a huge, thick cable mm. with all kinds of That's fibers. I thought no, the, the one that came into my house was as thin as a pin. Oh, wow. It's tiny. Mm. And the way it works is that it actually has... Um, well, it's glass, for one thing, or a form of glass, uh, fiberglass, but it has pulses of laser beams that go through that, and that's what transmits the data to your house. Nice. So it's flashing these laser beams at you know one thousandth or one millionth of a second each time, and it's like, wow, that's how you get it. It's mm -hmm. not through the former copper cables, which was all electric, now it's all by light, so it's pretty amazing. Mm. So you usually have to pay a flat fee for your data with Wi-Fi at home. And uh, you've got Wi-Fi at home, right? I do have Wi-Fi at home. We are on an unlimited plan, and I think it costs around, gosh, I can't remember, $80 a month. Okay, yeah. Um, and we can use as much as we want, which is quite handy. Absolutely. I used to be on a plan where I had to pay for a fixed amount of data, and it was frustrating the first time I used it, and that was over a year and a half ago. Um, I wound up using 80% of it in the first three days, mm. and that's very frustrating. So I had to scale back, not watch a lot of videos online like Netflix, things like that. So I had to be really careful, but now I'm on a service with fiber optic cable and it's great it's unlimited so i can watch as many videos as i want streaming videos netflix or neon tv or any of these other internet services and it's great and i'm sure with your kids it's great because you don't have to worry about you know telling your kids hey you've been playing that online game too long we're running up a bill 
that can be really frustrating with kids. And, of course, with adults, you don't want to sit there going, oh, well, we can only watch half the movie now and wait until next month and watch the other half. That's kind of (laughs) ridiculous. But so what I like to compare this to when you're using your Wi-Fi at home, think about when you make a cup of coffee or a cup of tea, you've got all the ingredients there, right? Yep. Do, you, do you put sugar in yours? Um, no, but I, but I have sugar there in case someone wants sugar. You have milk? Yep. yep. Okay. Yep. You, 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 your hot water is all there. That sort of stuff. You, yep. You've got your cups and your teaspoons and all that. Mm. Great. So how much do you think it costs to make a cup of coffee at home? Gosh, I mean, it must cost about 20, 30 cents maybe. 20, 30. 35 cents yeah, at the most. Like yeah, exactly. But... When you go out and use your phone and use the mobile data on your phone, it's like when you go out to a cafe and you say, I'd like a cup of coffee, and they say, that'll be $5, please. And you're like, what? How come it's $5 when it's all these ingredients are really cheap? Well, it's not cheap for the place you went to. They have to have money for the coffee, for the cups, Maybe disposable cups if you're taking it on the go. You have to, if you're having it there, they have to wash the dishes and they have to have the help there to do all that. They have to pay their rent and all these other things. So all that adds up to where every customer pays $5 for a cup of coffee. It doesn't seem fair, but when you think about all the things they do, yes, it is fair. Same thing with your data when you're using your mobile device somewhere else out in the open using your phone's plan. You may have enough data or maybe you have to pay for more, but you're always paying for the convenience. That's the important word to think of. When you're out and about with your phone, you're paying for the convenience of having that phone. Even though you paid a bunch of money for the phone itself and you may be paying money for your plan, any extra data, you have to pay extra. So. The next thing is that you can, of course, find Wi-Fi outside your home, and you'll see some symbols. It looks like a fan. That's the most common one. You'll see it on your phone. And then you might see a sign that actually says Wi-Fi or that we offer free Wi-Fi. They may have signs up. Some places don't. Some places uh, may actually charge you. But many restaurants and cafes offer free Wi-Fi. Why? It draws people in. And then they're sitting there and they're using their phone or their tablet or whatever. And great, you can do whatever you want, but you're probably paying for that $5 cup of coffee. Uh, And maybe you're having lunch as well. So they offer you free Wi-Fi. Libraries and other public places may offer free Wi-Fi as well. I know here in Masterton that, you know, we're just recently at the library and they had free Wi-Fi. No problem. You actually have to get the password and log in and say, yes, I agree to the terms and conditions, but it's free. But it's free. However, if you travel and you go to a hotel, they may offer free Wi-Fi or they may have a daily surcharge. I've been to some hotels and this is in the United States where they charge you $10 a day to use Wi-Fi. So, but if you are paying $200 a night for a place, $10 extra doesn't seem that much, but it's still an extra cost. But then again, some places may offer it free. Okay, so next up, what we're gonna look at is, uh, what is Bluetooth? Bluetooth is a wireless connection for your devices, okay? Now, when we talked about the mobile devices that you have, like your phone, your range is dependent on those towers and you might be, you know, have a range of several kilometers, no problem. When you're doing Wi-Fi, it's usually within your house or within that cafe, but when you have Bluetooth, the range is much shorter. It's no more than about 10 meters. That's what it was designed for. And as you can see, if you can see this picture, there's a person with those little um, microphone devices in their ear, which was meant so that people can use their phone hands-free, okay? And when that first came out, that was the, the big deal. You can walk around with, you know, this little thing in your ear and answer the phone whenever you want to. Um, Bluetooth 
can connect a phone or tablet to a headset, to earbuds, or to an external speaker. And Bluetooth can even send photos from one iPhone, for example, to another iPhone. It's, uh, it's called AirDrop. If you have an iPhone, that's what it's called. Other phones may do something similar. You can also connect a wireless keyboard or a mouse. That can be handy for some people who want to have that freedom of movement and working with their devices and want to have the laptop or the keyboard in their lap, rather. And uh, maybe they don't you know, want to have a lot, bunch of wires on their desk so they can do it all wirelessly. And that's with Bluetooth technology. And of course, as I said before, it's for very short ranges. So it's not anything to do with the internet per se, it's to connect other external devices. In the trade, it's known as peripherals. You've got a peripheral device and you want to connect it. Roger, can you just tell us a little bit about the COVID um, Tracer app and the Bluetooth technology in, in that and how that's um, how is that useful? Yeah, that's a recent uh, addition to the New Zealand COVID-19 Tracer application. Now, normally we would go around and we use our phone and we uh, see a uh, QR code, as it's called, on a door, and we use our camera to photograph that using the Tracer app, and we record our visit. And of course, you must always, at the bottom it says, you know, submit or okay. You must press that, otherwise it doesn't record it. However, what they recently did was they said, you can voluntarily turn on your Bluetooth, and most people have those on anyway, in case you do have a device, external thing to connect. But if you turn on your Bluetooth, and other people have their Bluetooth turned on on their phones, what happens is that codes are sent to each phone so that if you go to a place, let's say you go to that cafe and you forget to log in using the app itself, the app will sense and notice other people out there and it's anonymous. All they get are codes saying that, oh, you were in a cafe where somebody later on was diagnosed with COVID-19. So therefore, it can send you a notification saying you were there. It won't tell you who that person was. It's all anonymous, but at least you get a heads up so that if you want to quarantine yourself for a couple of weeks just to be safe, great. So it's just a way of doing it wirelessly in case you forget. Um, I still do the scanning because I think it's safer, but if I forget, then there's this little backup. And it all depends on everyone else having their phone using that Bluetooth system. And it's completely simple. You just go in there and say, I'll turn it on, and there you go. Don't have to think anything about it. Yeah. Does that answer your question? Yeah, thank you. Okay, mm -hmm. cool. Cool. So one last thing I want to talk about, and that is where does this Bluetooth name come from? It seems like an odd name. Well, it's the name of a Danish king, and his name was Harold Bluetooth. Now, we don't know exactly how he got his name, his nickname. A lot of Danish kings had interesting nicknames, but we think that it's one of two things. Number one, he loved blueberries, and he stained his teeth with <laughs> blueberries, and therefore people gave him the nickname Harold Bluetooth. They may not have said it straight to his face, perhaps, but that was the name history gave to him. The other possibility is that maybe during a battle, he got knocked in the, the teeth and one of the teeth went bad. And you know, they become discolored and maybe someone looking at it looked like it's to them like it was blue. Well, if he was royal, he would have certainly had blue blood, so that could Possibly. be another explanation. That could be yeah. another explanation, yes. But I have up on the screen, for those of you who can see it, that the letter H, written in runic writing, looks like vertical line with an X on top of it. And then you combine that with the runic writing for the letter B, put that together, and that's the symbol for Bluetooth technology. If you see that symbol, You'll see it on your phone. Sometimes you won't see it with the blue oval around it. You'll just see that symbol. That means your Bluetooth is on. Or if you're looking on your settings, you can see you know, that symbol. And 
one of the reasons they came up with it, apparently, now, it was a Swedish company that was coming up with this technology, but there was an American who was working for them who just happened to be reading about the Danish kings and came across that name. And since they were doing something primarily in the beginning for a microphone, a wireless microphone headset setup, that he thought, well, you talk with your mouth and you use your teeth, so why not call it Bluetooth? And they said, sure, why not? Okay, and that's how it got started. But now it's become just a an almost generic term for any kind of device that can connect over this system. So it's quite amazing how these things work. Now, one question I have for you, Sarah, is that who do you think actually came up with the technology that enabled cell phones to be able to communicate and have all of their uh, all of your conversations actually be be uh, encrypted? Because whenever you talk on the phone, it's always encrypted. Mm. Yeah, in fact, Roger, I actually know the answer to that. Funnily enough, <laughs> you know the answer. <laughs> um, an actress called Hetty Lamar, I believe. Hetty who Lamar was an actress in the forties and. Um, during the day she acted and in the evening she was an inventor and she actually came up with um, technology it was frequency jumping I believe that's right yeah and now that technology she never got paid a cent for it in her lifetime but now it's in Bluetooth it's in Wi-Fi it's in all of these technologies yeah yeah. she developed it because during the war she they, they were trying to come up with a way that they could wirelessly control torpedoes from submarines so that they could actually hit their target rather than missing all the time and she came up with this idea well if you have a radio transmission and they said but no you can't have just radio because the enemy can intercept the frequencies ah but if we jump frequencies you know like every half second or so they won't be able to control it so she came up with that technology that was applied as we said to our modern mobile devices pretty amazing and you know and she even said you know she she was known for her glamour but you know she was actually quite a brainy Mm. lady and she uh, eventually became a recluse because um i think because so much of her value was put on how she looked and as she got older she got a lot of plastic surgery Um, uh, but she never got any recognition for for her inventions until after she died so, yeah, that's pretty sad about yeah. that, but uh, but it's good that, that we're now recognizing uh, her accomplishments. Yeah. So we're actually getting close to running out of time here, so what I want to do is just make sure that people understand that, of course, today this is the show Let's Get Digital here on Aero FM, and this is brought to you by Digital Seniors here in the Y Rapid. Now, Digital Seniors is a pilot program that we've been running here for about two years. We would like to expand into other areas, but it's taking a bit of time to do that. And of course, we had a little bug last year that got in the way of things of doing that. So, um, but we want to provide a service, and we do provide it every week for seniors with their digital devices. So if you have problems with your iPhone or Samsung phone or tablet or laptop or printers or whatever, just give us a call at 0800 373-646. I'll repeat that, 0800-373-646. And as we mentioned earlier on, we meet several times during the week. Yep. So we meet in Masterton Wednesdays at the library from 10 to 11, Carterton Tuesdays at 3 Mile from 9.30 to 11.30, Greytown we meet at the library every Tuesday from 1.30 to 3.30, Featherston, we're at Union Church every Thursday from 1.30 to 3.30. And Martinborough, we're at St. Andrew's Church every Thursday from 9.30 to 11.30. Um, so you can either drop into one of our hubs, or if you prefer to make an appointment, you can call us on our 0800 number and schedule an appointment. Um, I'll just say the number one last time, 0800 373 646. One other thing, too. Um, this Saturday we have an event, right? Oh, we do have an event this Saturday. So we are part, Age Concern is having an expo at the Solway Showgrounds in Masterton. Um, there's going to be about 50 stallholders there and we're one of them. And we're also going to be doing a talk at 2.30 and that's on 
um, technology, smart technology that can be beneficial to seniors. So come along and say hi. We'd love to see you. There. Okay, great. All right. Well, we're going to wrap up the show right now. Thank you for listening. And, of course, this was Let's Get Digital here on Arrow FM. Goodbye. <laughs>